I brought all the stuff over, Coach. What's next? All right. I'll start by moving the boxes over. I'll help you. These things can get pretty heavy. Nah, nah, I got this. These muscles aren't just for show, you know. Mm, you see that? Ah, perfectly defined. I can lift this stuff up with one hand. Fine. As long as you don't wind up too sore to move tomorrow. I don't want to hear any complaints from you. Just prepare to be amazed. Huh? I should have trained harder. Edenson! We were just about to ask you the same thing. We didn't expect to run into you in these parts. You're here, Eonsan. And you must be the Traveler in Paimon. I've heard a lot about you. I'm sure we'll have a much better time now with your help. Cold. So cold. Duarte, are you there? I'm drowning. And there's something in the water! He's on the ground, but it almost looks like he's trying to swim. <laughs> the abyss... The abyss is coming. There are eyes in my hands, and hands in my stomach. And my stomach is full of teeth. It ain't all of you. It's coming for me, too. But we haven't been eaten. We're right here. Huh. Monstrous beasts! How did you get in here? As you can see, their mental state is quite poor. They went missing after the battle. We found them in the wilderness in the days that followed, but... The damage had already been done. We found them unconscious in areas corrupted by abyssal tumors, lying next to their deceased comrades. My only guess is that something terrible must have happened during the battle. According to the Chief of the Masters of the Nightwind, sudden exposure to a large amount of abyssal power can have mental as well as physical repercussions. We've never seen the effects this heightened before, but maybe Gasoythoth was just too powerful. It's the Abyssal Monster that appeared in the sky not too long ago. After consulting our ancient legends, we decided to call it Gasoythoth, Reaper of the Abyss. Oh, that giant black ball? Didn't we force it to retreat, though? True. It poses no threat to us now. But whatever wound it inflicted on these warriors still endures. We scoured all sorts of records for a solution. 
but nothing came of it. There was some mention of a treatment from several hundred years ago, but that knowledge is long gone. Right! You can purify abyssal power! Might as well give it a try! must mean purifying the abyssal power within them still isn't enough. <laughs> In any case, thank you for trying. So, what can we do now? You don't tell me my friend is just gonna be like this forever? Come back to me, Gogeta! Please, don't leave me like this! We beat Gasoithoth! They survived the battle! Are we really just gonna sit back? and watch them lose their minds? <laughs> what is it, Eonsan? <laughs> but, uh... Are you sure about this? Where is it coming from? It's working! Is... someone there? Please save me. No. No, wait. You have to leave this place. The water's too deep. You won't make it! No. Please. Just leave me. Duarte. My friend, is he any better? Duarte, uh, oh yeah, I remember. Duarte was the name of Otoko's Surian companion. Otoko almost drowned as a child and Duarte was the one who saved him. He dove deep into the water and used all his strength to carry Otoko back to the surface. It was pretty touch and go, but both of them made it in the end. Well, you see, Duarte died four years ago during an abyss invasion. He was helping evacuate injured warriors from the front lines, but fell to an ambush. Wait, what do you mean? You're right. Duarte didn't have many distinguishing features. I don't think he ever stood out next to the others. Hmm. 
No problem. Thank you for looking out for him. Duarte? How... How did you get here? Are you here to save me? It's working! Ah, that hurt! Duarte, you have to get out of here! There's something in the water! Duarte, you have to get out of here. There's something in the water. <laughs> You're gonna carry me out of here just like last time. <sighs> Over a decade later and you're still trying to save me. I can't believe you made it this deep underwater, but I'm so, once we're out of here, Let's split a huge portion of blazed meat stew, just like old times. I owe you for this. We're almost at the surface. People tried to tell me you were dead, you know. <sighs> As if I'd let that happen. I promise to protect you. There's no way. No way. <sighs> no. <laughs> Wait. I failed. <laughs> Duarte! Wait, you're not Duarte. How did I get here? Who are you people? Otoko! He's Kaylee. W what's going on? All I remember is the battle against the Abyss and... And then... I, I was drowning. And a Saurian that looked like Duarte saved me! How did I get here? You went through all that for me? While well, all I did was cause trouble for everyone? I'm so sorry. Thank you. I appreciate that. Wait. 
Doing it. Ion-san, I heard you cured a toko? I'm so relieved. Uh, is there anything I can do to help? If you need extra hands, I can... I think you're on to something. The mental distress does seem to be connected to pre-existing fears and anxieties. Kochita doesn't like it when people talk about her past. But the situation is urgent. So, I guess I'll be the bad guy. Yansan, do you believe there are people in this world destined for battle? Then, what about people destined to be unfit for battle? When Kachita was little, her parents died fighting the Abyss. She was only 11 or 12 at the time, and her brother, even younger still. The two saw their parents collapse in a pool of blood as flames roared and spread all around them. Kochita trained hard to become a warrior, but still found fighting abyss monsters too difficult to handle. She and her brother were left with severe trauma after the incident, pain and fear that they could not get over no matter what. But isn't Kochita one of the warriors who fought the abyss? Didn't you find her unconscious out on the field? Yes, we did. You see, something changed within her several years ago when the Abyss attacked our tribe and broke into her home. By the time the guards rushed to the scene, they found her standing there, weapon outstretched, hands trembling. Her brother huddling behind her for safety, and the Abyss monster dead at her feet. She didn't even look at it, and just kept repeating the same thing over and over. You're the only family I have left. I won't let anything happen to you. She became a completely different person after that. She earned a reputation as a very capable warrior, and fought countless battles against the Abyss. We all thought she overcame the trauma, and we were so happy for her. But now it seems like even if she buried it deep within herself, the fear still never left her. How can we help her? Quali? Huh? Quali, what are you doing with that weapon? Show me the monster that hurt you! I'll make it pay! I, I'm going to protect you this time! Calm down, Quali! That monster is already... I can do it! I don't care what it takes! I just want her to get better. She's the only family I have left. Family? It 
If Quali goes to battle, the Abyss will devour him. I can't let that happen. I have to do something. But it's useless. No one can beat the Abyss. It's a death sentence. Just like what happened to Mom and Dad. But I'm no warrior. I'm just a coward. Still, I have to protect Quali. What should I do? Kojita. Fight it. One more time? Try checking the mountains to the north. A few fled in that direction after the battle. I dispatched a team to clear them out, so most of them should be gone. But there might still be a few stragglers. There's no turning back. I have to face it, even if it will devour me whole. I'm coming too! I'm not letting my sister face this alone! Not anymore! As a kid, I thought my parents were invincible. They were always so strong and gentle. They seemed like the most powerful people in the world. But I can still see the image of them collapsed at my feet that night. The raging fire, the smoke, the smell of blood, the sound of my brother's cries. It's all burned into my brain. They told me to run, and I could see the fear in their eyes. I've been running from my fears ever since. But why didn't my parents run? It must have been because... You can do it! Because of our family. When you have someone to protect, there's no backing down. No matter what. That 
is... quite embarrassing. Sorry about that. I've always envied warriors who don't get scared or feel lost. It really felt like I was getting stronger over the years. But in the end, maybe I never made any progress at all. Even though we're both scared of monsters, you were always the one who stepped up to protect me. But not anymore. I'm gonna get stronger. From now on, we're in this together! Is that so? Then I'll look forward to the day when you'll be all big and formidable. I finally feel like myself again. I couldn't have done it without you all. Thank you for everything. I think I'll rest here for a bit. I don't think I can make it back to the tribe just yet. I'll keep you company. Joko's all better. Did you hear? <laughs> really? Yes, really. It's all thanks to the Traveler and Eonsan. I see. I was wondering why the Traveler was chosen to accompany the Pyro Archon in the final battle. But I guess she really can do the impossible. Rumors about the Kochita is getting better too. Koichi, give me a hand. Yeah, honestly, Paimon was at a complete loss when she saw so many sick people on the hot air balloon platform. We only found a solution this time because you kept her cool and took control of the situation. You deserve most of the credit. could do, but would that really change anything? Son, bad news! Okolan is out of control!
What are you doing, Uncle Lin? Wake up! Don't you recognize us, my boy? <sighs> the abyss monsters are everywhere. Everywhere. They've taken over the tribe. No corner is safe. Did we lose the battle? No. It's pointless to think about that now. A warrior only has one job. Fight until the very end. Careful! He's not himself! Ho, Kotlan! Going like this. Wretched monsters. Give me my family back. Look, Uncle Lan. That's your father. He's standing right in front of you. Get out of my home. I'll never forgive you. I'm fine. Please, don't hurt my son. He's just trying to protect his home. <sighs> what? What should we do now? He's different from the other two. It's like he can't hear us at all. He keeps calling us monsters. We're basically enemies to him now. <sighs> oh, Coldland. Abyssal Corrosion Syndrome. 500 years later, and it's resurfaced again. Huh? That voice, it's... Direct contact with high concentrations of abyssal power causes irreversible mental trauma in most people. The exact presentation will vary according to trauma level. Some will suffer from superficial hallucinations and maintain the capacity to perceive the outside world. In such cases, verbal and physical interaction can be used to break through the hallucination. However, there are also those who are so far gone, entrenched in hallucinations so deep, that medical intervention is the only option. That's why we developed the Drought of Lucidity. The draft of lucidity? It's a kind of medicine that can dispel the psychological impact of the abyss. The treatment comes with severe side effects, including chronic migraines for the rest of the patient's life. So, it's reserved for the worst cases. This man is a devoted warrior, one not easily swayed from battle. That is precisely why it's so difficult to pull him out of this hallucination. If you trust me to be true to my word, give him this. Wretched monsters! Setting up an ambush! Give me your worst! It's either your end or mine! Hurry! He's awake! Please, give him the draft. My son thinks he's alone in this world. In his mind, all his family and comrades are gone and only enemies remain. There's nothing more painful for a warrior than losing everything you fought so hard to protect. M monsters! Uh, uh, what? What's going on? I... Dad? What are you doing here? 
Ah, oh, my head hurts. I just had the strangest dream. I shrimped the abyss took over the tribe. It's all right, my boy. It was just a nightmare. Let's go home. You need a good night's sleep. But first, I want to thank you for saving my son. May I ask your name? For <clears throat> just Capitano is fine. I owe you more than words can say, Mr. Capitano. My name is Mune. You're welcome in my home anytime. Time to go, son. Can you stand? Think nothing of it. I agreed to offer you my aid, so this is merely a part of that duty. Besides, I care deeply about this land. Right! When we were with Moika, you told us you and your soldiers defended Natland against the Abyss 500 years ago. That's right. My desire to protect this nation remains unchanged. When my platoon arrived in Natland 500 years ago, like you, we were true outlanders, but as time passed, I encountered the people of this land and witnessed their desperate struggle against the Abyss. Though many of the warriors were rash and inexperienced, they were steadfast and fearless in battle, willing to do anything to protect their fellow citizens, oftentimes with complete disregard for their own survival. Just as I fought for the glory of Conria, they fought for the survival of their nation. We happened to share a common enemy, so I decided to offer my aid. We fought side by side to the very end. I traveled to many places after that, but I never forgot this land. Even now, my work in Natland remains unfinished. They remember who I used to be. The Sentinel Knight, who fought with the Masters of the Nightwind. Still... I prefer to leave all that in the past. That name carries with it the glory of my homeland and the honor of Natlan. Yet, I failed to bring my soldiers home. And I failed to help Natlan defeat the Abyss. But that's not your fault. The Abyss is way stronger than any of us imagined. You need not comfort me. I am no longer who I once was. Let the events of the past continue to collect dust in the annals of history. I will continue to help Natlan in my own way. Like, with the draft of lucidity? Who knew you could make medicine? Were you a doctor before? The drought was Guthred's invention. He was a respected military doctor, as well as my trusted second-in-command. We faced a similar situation to what you witnessed today. The endless battles against the Abyss triggered delusions among the soldiers, to the point where some attempted to kill each other. In order to develop a treatment as fast as possible, Guthred used himself as a test subject. He passed away shortly after the drought was complete. That's who he was. Unrelenting in his pursuits. No matter the cost, no matter the sacrifice. In the end, he even gave himself up for a chance of success. I'm sure he would be pleased his creation aids people even now. The Abyss has wrought enough suffering on this land. I sincerely hope this war will end soon. Stop worrying about other people's survival, about their losses and sacrifices. You just need to win. It must be why I've returned. For this moment. Please finish what you set out to do, Commander. <laughs> You're more perceptive than I imagined. However, some things are better kept secret for now. We may be working together, 
But our goals are not entirely aligned. What's with the secrets all of a sudden? I'm not starting to think we should be more careful around you. I do not mean to jeopardize the trust between us. I simply prefer to keep this to myself, because it's a personal matter. All I can tell you is this. Natlan may have survived the worst of the crisis, but the souls of this land are still not at peace. And that is why my work is not yet done. Well, if it's personal, then we'll just have to trust you. If you have other questions, I'm willing to answer them. Wait, like anything? Hama wants to know how you eat with the mask. Anything you want to ask, Traveler? Natlan must pay the price for Maweka's use of the Ruler of Death's power. That price is death. And only Maweka's death can clear the debt. Even now that the war's over and the threat to Natlan is gone, it looks like that death is still set in stone. In the garden cultivated by the gods, flowers and weeds grow side by side. When the weeds compete for nutrients in the soil, the gardener intervenes to inhibit their growth. I'm not one to pass judgment based on my own standard of right and wrong. But it is an undeniable fact that she is responsible for my suffering, as well as that of my people. If that explanation is too difficult to understand, allow me to show you exactly what I mean. The ruler of death can freely define the form of death, or grant immortality to anyone she desires. Her power is a rule in and of itself. Faced with such an overwhelming level of power, it can feel hopeless to resist. But I am of the belief that, in this world, no destiny is unchangeable, no death inevitable, and no rule unbreakable. So. Before the final moment truly arrives, we must fight harder than ever. Oh, did something happen? This is a critical time for you, Traveler. It's best not to delay, so let us end our conversation for now. Best of luck to you all. Goodbye. Reunited at last. Did you miss us? I brought candy and cookies to share. Of course we missed you. 
Ooh, you brought Source Crackers too? Score! Ugh, just in time, Traveler. It's so stifling in here. I was just about to go outside to get some air. It's the same temperature outside. Anyway, how was the trip here? Huh, to be honest, I also didn't expect this many people to show up. A third of this amount is more than enough for my plan. I need to ask them about you, gather their thoughts and hopes. That will help the formation of your ancient name. Oh, uh, you brought the Pilgrim's Chronicle, right? Yeah, let me, uh, let me take a look. Hmm, okay. The progress looks good. We have enough people. So let's get started. Sorry I'm late. Chaska showing up late for something? That's a first. I had to follow a group of monsters further than expected. When I got back, I heard about what you did for my tribe. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, let's save the pleasantries for later. Everyone's here, so let's get started. All right, let me remind everyone what's going to happen. I need each of you to stand before the Pilgrim's Chronicle and share your story. Your words will be recorded and become a part of the Traveler's ancient name. Any, uh, questions? Nope. All right, then to start things off. Uh, hold on. Remember what we discussed? Oh, right. I almost forgot. Uh, Traveler, Paimon, you, uh, can't be here for this part. Huh? But why? We want to hear what everyone has to say. I need people's true thoughts and feelings. It's best if the subject in question isn't involved. It's much more difficult to express those feelings to someone's face. People get shy in those situations. It's, yeah, it's just how it is. You're right. Just like when Paimon doesn't have enough more to pay for her meal, but she's too embarrassed to tell the traveler, so she has to make up some excuse. <laughs> so basically, you want us to leave the Pilgrim's Chronicle here and wait nearby? Oh, don't worry. This shouldn't take long. Everything Shilonan and said made sense, but did you see Seat Lolly's reaction back there? She was definitely the one who decided we should leave. Hmm. But staying out here is just making Paimon even more curious about what everyone's gonna say. Anyway, you're gonna have an ancient name soon. Ooh, that's so exciting! Feels like we've been in Natland for quite a while already, doesn't it? You're right! If only Paimon could say a few things about you in there. Well, looks like you're about to have that chance. Shilonen, is everything all set? Almost. We're just missing one last thing. You've been by the Traveler's side the longest, Paimon. We need to hear what you have to say. But Paimon's not from Natland. Oh, it doesn't matter. As a Traveler's companion, your contributions are extremely important. You're the perfect person to finish the story. I'm sorry, Traveler. I just need to borrow Paimon for a second. It should be quick. Paimon gave us a lot, whew, and I mean a lot of information. I'm not even sure the Lord of the Night managed to get all of it. Well, we've been to Six Nations already. Here, you can have the Pilgrim's Chronicle back. I'll need it when I forge the name, but you can continue your adventures in the meantime. And when the time comes, I will forge you an ancient name unlike anything that's come before, so that you... Moika and Natlin as a whole can finally put an end to this endless war. 